The Allegory of the Orchard by Daniel E. Dawes. A farmer sought to acquire new land in hopes of establishing an orchard and thus increasing his wealth. He came upon a plot he found suitable for his needs. One portion of the land was a bit rocky, another part had poor soil, a third part had nutrient-rich soil. And on this site, he found a beautiful tree. This tree was well-established, as evidenced by its size. The tree was not only majestic, but also bore delicious fruit and sheltered the local wildlife. But the farmer and his workers dug up the tree, moving it to a corner of the land where it would be eventually forgotten. With six seeds in his pocket, the farmer planted two of the seeds in the rich soil. He took his time digging the holes, measuring the depth, and carefully placing the seeds. He commenced planting the next two seeds in the far less fertile soil. He did not feel the need to measure the depth as he had done earlier. He then used what little remaining fertilizer he had left. He rushed to plant the final two seeds in the rocky soil, where he neglected to add the fertilizer or water them. When spring finally arrived, the results were not what the farmer had hoped for. Of the two seeds planted in the rocky area, one never germinated, but the other grew despite its circumstances. This seedling was weak and feeble, but determined to survive. The two seeds in the poor soil both germinated, but one soon shriveled up and the other continued growing, managing somehow to pull little nutrients from the depleted soil. The two seeds in the rich soil began flourishing quickly, producing fresh, tender, and bright green leaves. As the summer came to a close, a raging storm appeared out of nowhere. The farmer found that one of his four remaining trees had been struck by lightning, splitting it in two, leaving a lifeless tree in the rocky soil. The farmer now had only three remaining trees, Every few months, the farmer and his workers sprayed the trees with pesticide to prevent bugs. Even so, the tree in the poor soil struggled. The farmer noticed that this tree was struggling and instructed his workers to fertilize the ground. After a long winter, the two trees in the nutrient-rich soil were strong. They were healthy, and the fruit they bore was large and sweet. The farmer was pleased. He had invested a great deal into these trees. The tree in the poor soil was small, its limbs were weak. Nevertheless, this tree was resilient. The fruit on this tree was small, and the farmer believed that this tree was not going to produce as much as his other two trees. In a final attempt, the workers irrigated the soil around it. However, by late summer, the farmer decided not to invest additional effort into helping this tree achieve its potential. The farmer did not realize that the source of the tree's problem was underground, where bugs had begun to gnaw at the roots. Had he thoroughly examined the tree, he would have been able to properly address its needs. The farmer began corresponding with a dear friend, a popular arborist. The arborist agreed to visit the new orchard. When he reached the farm, the farmer left his friend to examine the trees. The arborist first examined the two healthy trees, he then examined the struggling tree. Recognizing the inherent strength in this tree, he realized it would be a perfect specimen to study. The tree was obviously not the farmer's priority. He began exposing it to various fungal diseases, extracting material, and removing various branches to see what effect would be on the tree. Checking on the tree later that day, he was unaware that the arborist was doing anything other than examining. The arborist explained that he had been conducting experiments, saying that this information would help the success of his remaining healthy tree. As the next winter approached, workers used the arborist's recommendation to ensure that the trees were strong. The struggling tree, however, received none of these benefits. Spring soon arrived, and the two trees in the rich soil were again strong and healthy. The farmer was overjoyed. However, there in the midst of the land, the struggling tree had succumbed to the neglectful conditions. It had grown large in spite of the circumstances. Its roots were thick, but they were brittle. The trunk was covered in fungus, and the inside had been hollowed out by bugs. The farmer and his workers surveyed his land, 
They were well pleased with their progress and proud of their work. They beamed over the two surviving trees, knowing they would produce a crop at a healthy profit. The farmer never considered the possibility that the tree he neglected might actually have been his strongest tree. Furthermore, no thought was given to the forgotten tree that had graced the horizon when the farmer originally arrived on the land. The farmer had an orchard, but he did not achieve the orchard he could have had. In countless ways, this allegory serves as a lesson for us all. To learn more, please read The Political Determinants of Health by Daniel E. Dawes.